Hello and welcome to the Leading with Lean podcast. My name is Philip Holt, author of Leading with Lean, The Simplicity of Lean, and Leading Lean by Living Lean. And in this podcast, I narrate all three of my books, chapter by chapter, in which I share with you my over 30 years of experience as a lean leader across many companies globally. The Simplicity of Lean, Chapter 11, Kaizen Every Day. It doesn't need to be perfect to be better. As I mentioned in Chapter 9, whenever there is a problem, we should always first ask the question, are we running to standard? As many times the issue in quality, efficiency or service, delivery, is due to us simply not following the standard. Often, we simply aren't doing what we ought to be doing, and it can be hard to admit that, but in a lean thinking organisation, we need to have the courage to admit when we've simply been human and not followed the standard. We can then reset and get back to the expected performance level, rather than wasting time solving problems that don't, or at least shouldn't exist. However, when we confirm that we are working to the standard, it's important to be realistic about the improvements that we're able to make. In the long term, everything is possible, but often we can get stuck in a think big mindset, which can be debilitating, as we focus on the big improvements, the step change initiatives, and wait for that great day when they solve all of our problems. Unfortunately, the reality is that breakthrough improvement takes significant effort in terms of both money and resource, and every organisation has limited resources to do so. As I'll discuss in chapter 13, breakthrough improvement is critical, but too often we neglect the small improvements as we wait the holy grail of tomorrow. This is where the art of improvement is essential, the mindset that every little grain of improvement will contribute to a larger cumulative impact on the organisation. The improvement, the Kaizen, doesn't need to be significant in itself. In fact, that's the beauty of it, that it is quick and easy to implement. And when each and every team member implements a number of them per year, the organisation improves far more than any project team could have achieved. That's not to say that we don't need step change improvement. Quite the contrary, we need both. Focusing purely on projects and breakthrough improvements slows down improvement within the organisation and means that each project has to resolve a number of ancillary issues to be successful. For example, solving master data issues or documenting process tasks rather than building on solid foundations. What you'll see in the book is a graph of the complementary approaches of Kaizen and Kaikaku, where performance is on the y-axis, time is on the x-axis, and you see small incremental improvements from Kaizen, some step changes from Kaikaku, and so on, in a ladder effect, which effectively gives you overall significant improvement. What we need is a little and often approach by the people doing the work, which, almost unnoticed, will reduce the firefighting load on the leadership, who are then able to focus on the big improvements. Whilst Kaizen is an incremental change, Kaikaku refers to a radical or step change. It's interesting to note that many people consider Kaizen and continuous improvement to be synonyms, whereas I would argue that it's only so in lean thinking organisations where Kaizen is an everyday activity resulting in continuous improvement. In many organisations, improvement activity, often referred to as Kaizen, is discontinuous, imperfect in its outcome and not sustained, meaning that the compound benefit that we're aiming for is not realised. And in visual terms in the book, what I show is a combination of a sustained improvement where you see the Kaizen, the standardisation, giving you that real continuous improvement to higher and better performance, whereas a discontinuous alternative where we have Kaizen, but then it drops off. Then we do Kaizen again, and then it drops off. So the rate of improvement is very slow. In fact, it's almost linear, flat, with no improvement whatsoever. Kaizen explained. As I mentioned briefly in chapter four, Kaizen are not simply good ideas, but rather they are the outcome of solving one of the three types of problem. One, the standard is not achieved. Two, the standard is achieved but with high variation. Or three, the current standard is achieved but a new standard is required. Even in the early days of your transformation, when standards don't exist, you will essentially be solving problem type three, whereby a new standard, the first standard, is required. In lean thinking organisations, the simplicity of lean is that every team member is challenged and empowered to constantly solve the three types of problem on a daily basis. 
Even when things are running well, they will be given type 3 problems to solve. For example, being asked to reduce the cycle time by 2 or 3%, and will normally solve it through the reduction of one or more of the eight wastes. And what you'll see in the book is the Kaizen process, where it shows at the top, standardise and sustain. Then we cycle round to expose and quantify problems. Then we cycle round to analyse root cause. And then we cycle around to in implement countermeasures and so on, the standardise and sustain. And that's showing that Kaizen, that continuous improvement mindset, everything that we do today can be improved and Kaizen has no end. Dependent upon the size of the problem, the cycle will take different amounts of time. At the team member level, the challenge to improve a little every day will be tackled with small waste walks or huddles, whereby the team or team member will find the root cause of not having yet met the new target. For more complicated problems with larger differences between the current performance and the standard, more time might be required. Although the general rule in the lean mindset attributed to Taiichi Ono is that no problem found today should wait longer than tomorrow to be solved. I'm pretty certain that if you choose to reflect on this during your Hansai time at the end of the chapter, you'll be struggling with a big gap between this philosophy and your organization's current working practices, which will probably run with multiple chronic problems. You won't solve this overnight, but it is the goal that everyone in the organization must aspire to reach. Kaizen is looking inwards. What I've learned about Kaizen over the years is that the most important thing is the inward perspective that its practice promotes. Typically, human nature is such that we look at others to improve our lot. We could do things really well if only others would change or if the systems were upgraded or fixed. However, we are much more the masters of our own destiny than we recognise and we must therefore rid ourselves of excuses and prevarication and instead focus on action and Kaizen. Most importantly, we need to constantly remind ourselves that Kaizen is about looking inwards, not pointing blame outwards. As the teams put standardised work in place, they will begin to understand their processes better. And whilst the external factors will not go away, they'll be better able to see the myriad opportunities available to improve the elements of the value stream that they own. Hard work on improving the problems to realise the opportunity and the implementation of some breakthrough improvements and numerous Kaizen will take the team to a place where they truly understand their performance and the problems coming in from upstream. Once they have the data to show the problems on a factual basis, they'll be able to have a constructive dialogue with the team members from the upstream process, working with them collaboratively to improve the flow of the value stream using the skills that they've developed. Incidentally, but not insignificantly, the downstream process team members, their customers, perhaps the end customer, will have seen the improvement in service, delivery and quality and will be much happier in the relationship. Looking inwardly is a core skill for a lean leader and a lean thinking organisation must practice this mindset, always beginning the problem solving with the question, what can we or I do to solve this? Creating the Kaizen culture. By now, I hope that the concept of Kaizen is clear and that you feel inspired to create the Kaizen everyday approach in your organisation. However, some caveats. Firstly, Kaizen everyday is not about starting a suggestion scheme or putting up idea boxes. The Kaizen culture relies upon team members identifying problems in their area and solving them, either themselves where they can or through escalation to the appropriate level. This is contrary to a suggestion scheme approach, which normally has three key issues. Number one, it promotes the others should improve mindset, promoting idea torpedoes towards other teams or departments. Number two, many of the ideas are good ideas, not based upon data, but on opinion or perception. And number three, it takes too long, typically having a weekly collection with them and a committee of some sort to sort, discern and decide upon the ideas to promote to implementation. The crux of it is that this type of suggestion system will detach the idea generator from the implementation of the suggestion. Instead, in a Kaizen culture, we promote communication so that the person who has identified the problem, potential causes and Kaizen idea can either implement it themselves, if possible, or speak to their leader to get to the right resources to make the change. Where the leader doesn't see the benefit of implementing the Kaizen, the team member and their leader can have a dialogue and perhaps enhance the idea, making what might not be quite workable 
a great solution. In embedding the Kaizen everyday approach, it's important to have a clear and consistent message of what Kaizen is. Focusing on the fact that the data drives the identification and root cause analysis of problems is key to this, as we really must avoid a good ideas approach to Kaizen. Stimulating good ideas might be exciting and have an initial motivational effect, but it will soon become counterproductive as our people become frustrated with the number of changes to standards that don't actually deliver a performance improvement and are simply preferred ways of working. There are essentially three criteria that an improvement must meet to be a Kaizen. Number one, it solves a problem. Number two, it results in an improvement to the standard work. And number three, it's been implemented and trained to all users. This first requirement is one that I have often interest in discussions with people about, as many people believe that a Kaizen can simply be a good idea, and that insisting on someone going through a problem-solving process before implementing a Kaizen can deter them. I do tend to agree that we ought not to put barriers in the way of people's engagement with Kaizen. However, if we simply open up a process that is, in effect, akin to the traditional idea box or suggestion scheme, we risk suffering similar failures. If we do train our team members to problem solve, with the outcome being a Kaizen, then the likelihood of the team's acceptance, and hence the successful implementation of it, is much higher. Another argument often put forward is that not every problem solution will result in a Kaizen, the tree training of people often being used as an example, where insufficient competency was the cause. My response to this is to challenge whether the countermeasure of retraining people was really addressing the root cause or a symptom. If we think it through, we need to get to the root cause of why people were not sufficiently competent and put in place countermeasures in the form of Kaizen of the standard work to ensure that it doesn't recur. I have personally never come across a problem solving process that doesn't warrant at least one Kaizen and it's very powerful when the team members have been trained and have internalised this approach. Once again, the approach to take with the implementation of this Kaizen culture is to work with a team of volunteers, most likely those with whom you've been implementing the other elements covered thus far, and provide them with training and practice Kaizen as an outcome of the problem solving that they will have begun. You will start to see that it is a system whereby the two people elements of culture and Kaizen enable each other, which is how I came to develop the simplicity of lean model. And the chapter ends with a quote from Clarence Francis. You can buy a man's time, you can buy a man's physical presence at a given place. You can even buy a measured number of skilled muscular motions per hour or day. But you cannot buy enthusiasm, you cannot buy, buy initiative, you cannot buy loyalty, you cannot buy the devotion of hearts, minds and souls. You have to earn these things. Mm-hmm.